War Diary Day 505 that Russia's war against Ukraine. It's been raining in Kyiv and to be honest with you, the mood is gloomy. The counteroffensive has not been um, a great thrust of movement on the, on, on the contrary. It's grinding, it's slow um, and a lot of people here are quite naturally exhausted. Me too. But um, <clears throat> the reason for this is simple. The problem is that the West has not given um, the weapons the Ukrainians need in a timely fashion. In particular, uh, that means the F-16s, the fighter jets. And because of the lack of those, it means that the Ukrainians don't have aerial supremacy and therefore it's much easier for the Russians to defend their lines. They've got minefields, they've got drones, the Russian army has adapted, it's become better and more cute. And so it's going to be a long, long slog. Not over uh, this summer, um, but maybe in the autumn and maybe in the spring. Fingers crossed. However, it's not all bad. Um, there's a lot of a lot of pain coming out from the Russian ranks. There's a general called Popov who has been sacked and he says essentially he was sacked because he was telling truth to Kremlin power and they didn't like what he was saying, which is that the Ukrainians are really pummeling his, his soldiers with artillery and the Russians are saying, or this general is saying, oh, you're not doing enough. So grim as it is, Ukrainians are hanging in there. Remember, they have no choice. If they lose, Ukraine, as we know it, as we love it, doesn't exist anymore. We have to put pressure, as much pressure as possible on Russia, and that means giving the weapons Ukrainians need. Vladimir Putin, do fuck off.